This video is an introduction to WinCoot. This video is uh, created for the practical at the University of Bath on model building with WinCoot, but also acts as an introduction to WinCoot in general. If you have installed WinCoot or have it on your system, you should be able to open it from the file manager. When you open WinCoot, you will find it often brings up a, a range of these boxes. Um, you may have a, a Coot auto save file you want to run, um, but if not, you can click no. It often brings up a tip like this, um, but we can just close that as well. And Coot here has two windows. It has the window that actually runs the program, which we can just minimize. And it has um, this window where we can actually view our molecule. So it's worth to start with getting your window in a suitable position where you can actually see what you're doing. So you'll display your molecule here. As you can see, there are a range of uh, buttons down the side, and these all do interesting things. But unless you know what they are, um, you might not be able to work out what they are from the picture, although it does tell you if you hold the mouse over it. So what I would recommend is to bring up um, a more helpful version of these um, buttons and this is you can do this by going to calculate and then clicking on model fit refine and this brings up a separate window which actually has instructions of what you want to do and so it's useful to um, this, get your screen set up so you've got your window for coot here and then your buttons down here at the side telling you what all the things are so to start with we'll want to open the file that we want to look at. And so we do this by going into File and then Open Coordinates. And so it's useful to know where you've saved your file. And this is the file I want to open. It's a coordinate file. Let's ignore that for the moment. And what it does is it brings up um, a visual representation of all the atoms in the protein molecule that I'm interested in. This is angiotensin converting enzyme endomain and as you can actually see we have um, two versions of the molecule um, although we'll, we'll probably only just look at one of them. So we can move the molecule around in a number of ways. If we hold down the left mouse button we can turn the molecule around like this. If we hold down the right mouse button, we can zoom in and out. If we want to center on a particular atom, we can click with the middle mouse button or wheel. So here I can click on this, and then we then center here. OK, so we can see here how the um, peptide backbone is displayed. At every point where we have these lines coming together, this represents an atom, and these are the bonds that are displayed. So this is the alpha carbon here with the side chain, then we have the, the nitrogen, uh, the carbon part of the peptide bond with the carbonyl oxygen. So you see that nitrogens are usually displayed as blue atoms, and oxygens as red atoms. This here is a valine side chain. Um, the red crosses represent uh, water molecules. We can't see hydrogens, so we're only ever looking at the, the oxygen molecule. It's also noticing, worth noticing that when you click on an atom, it actually tells you what that atom is. So this HOH says that this is a water, and it's been numbered 8 to 8, but it might be more useful if we click back on this leucine and zoom in. We can see that it tells you that this atom is the alpha carbon, CA, 441 is the residue number in the chain. Leucine is the type of residue it is. And this tells you that we're looking at molecule B, because I said we have two versions of this molecule, A and B. So if we want to do any model building, then we need to also um, open our map. So hopefully you've already uh, downloaded a map file as well. This is the map file I want to use. So there are different types of map file. 
um, and this empty Z file itself is not actually a map file but what it does is it contains all the information required to generate maps for this molecule and CUT itself generates the maps for you um, from the data within that file. It's also worth noting that we never actually edit the data in that file um, in this program. So as you can see, um, CUT has drawn a map for us around part of the molecule here. And the reason it's only drawn part of the map is because map files are very large and they take up a lot of space in the computer memory. And so although you can tell it to choose a different uh, sphere to draw the map in, um, the computer gets slower if it draws too much of it. So we always just draw part of the map around the bit where we've got um, the molecule centered. So if we want to look at the map over here, all we need to do is to change the centering of our molecule to put the map over here. And then we can look at this part of the map as well. So what is what, what are these map files? Well, we have um, two map files. We have this one 2FOFC map, which is the blue mesh that we can see surrounding the molecule. And this is the, the map that um, describes the electron density for the protein. The red and green blobs are the FOFC map, and this shows either peaks in the map where we have something modelled and there isn't enough data to support that, so they would be the red blobs, or the green blobs indicate where the data suggests we should have something modelled, but we don't currently have something in the model at that time, at this time. However, as this is actually a map for a fully refined model, then there aren't really many parts of the model we'd want to change in relation to this map and most of the blobs that we can see are just due to noise so you can see this is just a little blip here it doesn't actually look like an atom or a residue however we click on this here we can say well this is suggesting that part of this arginine residue shouldn't be here and this is probably because this arginine is partly disordered and in more than one conformation um, and so that's why there's a red blob there so it's worth always checking what you're doing with your display manager. So in your display manager, it will tell you all the things that you currently have displayed. So this is our coordinate file, and we can turn this on and off. This is our um, 2FOFC map, which is the blue one. This is the FOFC map, the red and the green one. So by clicking them on and off, you can see which one's which. Um, but we can also use this to change the properties of either our map or our molecule. So if we wanted, we could look at our um, molecule, just the backbone. You can see we've lost all the side chains. We're not going to want to do that today. But we can also change the properties of our map. And this is sometimes useful if you want to change the color of your map. This blue is uh, very good and usually quite popular, but if you don't like it, you can adjust it there in colour. But also because this um, here links the scroll on the mouse wheel to the level of the map. So currently the scroll is set um, to the 2FRC map. And so if we scroll the mouse wheel, you can see that the level of the map changes. And we may want to change this level of the map. Usually we uh, contour to f to FRC maps at one sigma and this is the number here displayed in, in brackets though it now says RMSD. But if you make this about one then this is usually a good level to um, look at the map with. So finally, um, if we actually want to look at a particular part of our molecule um, and we don't want to just be able to find it by randomly clicking on atoms, we can also use the draw menu and go to atom. And here we can uh, pick which molecule we want to center on. We've only got one molecule loaded at the moment, um, so we don't have a choice. We can pick the chain A or B. Um, and we can pick the residue number. So if we want to look at residue 56 of chain A, we can just type 56 in the box. 
and it brings up residue 56, which is a glutamate with some density missing. We can also pick our residue just from pulling down the, the chain and clicking on one like that as well. This is arginine. So finally, we may want to uh, edit the coordinates um, which are displayed as the sticks here. <coughs> and if we do, we'll want to save our file. Remember I said we don't actually ever change um, the data in the MTZ file from this program. But if we do change the model, then we can save the coordinates through file and then save coordinates. And if you've got more than one molecule loaded in your coot, then again you can pick the molecule you want from the pull down menu. But as we only have one, then we will pick that. And then we can put in um, the name we want. And Coot suggests a name, but it's it's uh, rarely one that you want. And it may also suggest a, a folder um, that you may actually want to pick a folder that you think is going to be useful. So don't just go with the default one. Pick the folder with your name, and then you can save it. And finally, if you're going to then open another molecule, it might be easier to close these ones first. And you can do that through um, the file menu and this button here, close molecule straight map. And then this brings you up a list of the things you have open in Qt at the moment. If you don't want them open anymore, then you can just click on all of them and delete molecules and maps. So note that this does not delete either the MTZ or the PDB files you have saved that are in your uh, folder system. This only deletes them from this Qt window, so they disappear. But they're still there in your file system if you want to reopen them.